6.2, we are going to find the regions between curves. Between curves, that means you have more than one curve involving into the problem. There are two parts going to be doing like with respect to X or with respect to Y. The idea of finding the region, think about when you find the area, okay? The area means you find, if you have the square or the rectangle, that's the length times width for the area of the rectangle. We know that it's length times width, okay? Or if you know the width, you know the length, you just multiply it. For our case, we are looking for finding the area between the curves. The idea of this is to break it up, like to, <clears throat> um, once we know the interval from point A to point B, what we would do is to do the partition, they break it up into equal sub interval from point A to point B, and then create the partitions with the width of the delta X. The delta X or the chain in X is the end X minus the beginning X divided by the number of the sub intervals, okay? To find the area, we target one section at a time. So based on one bar, to find the area of this rectangle, if you know the width, the width is delta x, the delta x, and the height of the bar or the length, that is the difference of the two function. For the diagram here that you see, the upper graph is the function f, the lower graph is the function g. So the height gonna be the difference of the function x and the function g. Okay, now based on one bar here, we know the width and we know the length. To find the area, gonna be length times width. That is the area of one bar, but you have like multiple of them. You have so many of them. Okay, so many of them. When you have many of them, you add them all up. That means you have the sum. When you get the sum, you add them all, and then you're gonna gain some error, like you know the adjustment you know, for each bar. You take the limit as n approaches infinity. When you take the limit of the summation of the length times the width, which is the change or the difference of the two function multiplied by the width, which is delta x. This limit of the summation is the integral sign. You know the bound from point A to point B. So you obtain the definite integral of the integrand as f minus g or the upper minus lower function. The, D, the delta x is the same as differential x. So the definite integral representing the area between two curves as long as we know the upper function and the lower function. In our case, the function f is upper, the function g is lower, and the bound from point A to point B. So this case is with respect to x. Why it's with respect to x? Because you have the chain in x, okay? Or the partition, the width is according to the x direction. Or when you move the bar, you move from the left to the right, Okay, so that means from point A to point B, starting from the left to the right, and or you pretend like you have the pen or the pencil, you mark it, and then you move the pen left to right. So this one will tell you about with respect to X. I'll walk you to the example together real quick. For this case, the graphs are provided. As you see, the line is Y equals 2X and the curve is y equals x squared minus three. If you do not um, want to do it by hand, you can use the graphing calculator or the desmos.com to see the, the better graph area or the, the area that you are going to find um, the, the, the region that you have to find the area, sorry. And since this problem already provided you the graph, you can see the shaded area is the one that you have to find and it's bounded by these two graphs. When it's bounded, you know where 
the end and where to stop of the region. So those two, they are called intersection points. So if the graph is not clear enough, you still have to do it by hand, or you show me what are those intersection points from the graph provided. It doesn't tell you where those two graphs meet each other. So the first part, you're gonna have to find the intersection point. And how do you find the intersection point? Think about, when they meet each other, that means they uh, they equal each other. So you just set those two e those two functions equal to each other. Okay, so set the two x equals x squared minus three, and then solve for x. Move our terms into one side, and solve quadratic equation. The typical method that what we do is two factor. Okay, we have x times x to get x squared. And then negative three, that means one number is negative uh, three and one. What side that you're gonna do? The negative two as a result, that means a negative side for the greater value. So we have the quantity X minus three multiplied by the quantity X plus one. We get the two values of X, X equals three and X equals negative one <clears throat> as the two intersection point right here, negative one. Right here is three. That tells you the bound or the lower limit, upper limit are negative one and three. Okay, so put the note here A equals negative one, B equals three. And to find the area, as we know from the graph, we can see that the line is the upper function because it's above the parabola. So the parabola is the lower. Pretend like you draw one bar. And if you move this bar along the region, one line or one curve stays upper for the entire moving position. The other curve remains as a lower or the on the bottom of the of the bar for the entire region. Like if you move the bar to the left to the right, one remain upper, the other one remains lower. So this way gonna tell you the delta x as the width. And when you see the delta x, the interval gonna be x from negative one to positive three. And another indication that tells you it's about with respect to x, okay? With respect to x will help you set up the antiderivative to, to represent the area. So area is a definite integral, lower x to upper x of the upper function. What upper function? The line is the upper, subtracted by the lower, which is x squared minus three with respect to x. That pretty much telling you the integrand is the height of the bar or the length okay, of the bar, and the dx is the width, the length times width, that uh, together to give you the area, an integral from negative one to three tells you the bound of the area. Oh, where did it go? It went to this, sorry about that. Um, okay, so that means, um, all together here will give you the, the antiderivative with respect to x, okay, with respect to x. Now, after you get the problem set up, you're gonna have to clean up the, the integrand as much as you can. I would recommend you to clean up as much as you can because you have the negative side of the grouping symbol. If anything, you can add or combine as light terms, go ahead. But for this problem, after you take away the grouping symbol, you get two X minus X squared plus three. No light terms that you can combine. So this version is much cleaner than the version that you have the quantity with the negative sign in the front. So based on this, you are ready to go with uh, finding the antiderivative term by term. The two X antiderivative is two x squared over two, that return x squared. And then the second term will be x to the third over three plus three x. And then evaluate from the lower limit to the upper limit. Same, same routine, 
upper limit replace first. Okay, three times three here, and then subtract it by replacing with the lower limit. Can we make sure to put parentheses around because this is a negative sign. So one over three times negative one to the third plus three times negative one. And then the calculator should give you the value as 32 over three, or you can do it by hand is either way, or 10 and two thirds value for the area between these two curves.